Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISC podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Obviously, as you get more uh, intricate, you know, as your strategies get more complex, probably greater risk with probably greater reward. Wouldn't you say that, Dan? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would say that with any strategy, really, that is the, you know, the trade-off that you just can't get away from. I mean, it's always, if you're looking for more reward, you're, you're always going to have to take more risk. But, you know, one thing that separates good option traders from, you know, less good option traders is to kind of be able to intellectualize that a little bit. And though I know if I want a big reward, I have to take more risk, constructing a position where I take maybe just a little bit more risk to get a lot a bit more reward, you know, that ends up being a winning recipe. Oh, that's great. Great point, Dan. Uh, Al- Alka has a question. He says, when do you use the strategy? Do you do it, do you do it personally? Bullish, bearish, neutral, do you have a preference, or um, do you just, you know, basically, I um, you can use it at any point? Well, you, I mean, it is a versatile strategy. I mean, I kind of laid this out as if there's two choices, but really, there's, there's a lot more than two choices. Uh, for those of you who are income traders and maybe have bought calendars before, you know that the place to be at expiration is right at the shared strike price, right? Well, if right now the underlying currency is at the strike price, well, great. That's a neutral strategy. I want the currency to not move between now and expiration. But if I'm maybe a little bit bullish, what I could do is I could buy one of these calendar spreads with a strike price that's higher than where the currency is trading right now. And so there, the same rule applies that I want the currency to be at the strike price at expiration, but now the strike price, you know, because it's higher, the currency has to move up a little bit. So I actually end up with a bullish strategy. And if I were to look at the Greeks to net those out, I could see that it's bullish because it would end up having a little bit of a positive delta. And I could do the same thing if I'm bearish as well. I could select a strike price that's a little bit below where, where it's trading. And, you know, because you have um, that negative delta, if, you know, if the currency falls and you end up kind of timing it right and it goes to the strike price, you can get a fairly good leveraged profit when that works out. Just want to remind everyone too that one thing that Dan's going to offer that you know maybe a lot of us don't have. I mean, I, I, I've known Dan for a number of years, but Dan's going to understand their specific markets, and there are nuances, as Dan said, it, to each market. If you're trading oil, that's going to be completely different than if you're trading, let's say, SPY. If you're trading U.S. dollar versus Australian dollar, uh, that might be completely different than trading Google. Uh, and when I'm saying different, the skews are going to be different. The volatility skews might be much different in one versus another. You're going to want to understand, uh, and it, there's no perfect recipe here because the correlations can break down, but you want to understand the normal relationships so that you could set up your trade based on your own forecast and then your own prediction of skew. Wouldn't you say that, Dan? Yeah, for sure. You know, it is, you know, although... On the one hand, options is options. You know, I mean, it's gamma, theta, vega means the same thing no matter what you're trading. Yeah, these, these volatility nuances in terms of skew are really important. So you ought to spend a little bit of time kind of taking a look at that and getting used to it before jumping in. Hey, Dan, can you explain in your book, you know, and go into it? Because I'm getting a lot of questions on, and then I, I just typed in the name of the book, Trading Options Greece. What does it go into, and where can all the attendees get it? Sure, sure. Um, you know, it, it's a book written for people who maybe are, are, are new to options or people who've been trading them for years. I mean, I've had some professional traders pick up my book and tell me that they learned a ton, and I've had some people who are, you know, really new to options, and they learned a ton. I kind of start out, st- kind of start out slow, start out at the beginning, but by the end I ramp up and I talk about, you know, like market maker positions and delta neutral trading. So it's, it's pretty comprehensive, uh, 
you know, my my editor wanted it to be a certain length, but I wrote it a little bit longer because I wanted to make sure I got in everything that was, I thought was necessary. And I mean, you can get it on Amazon, or you know, you can you can contact me, and I'd be happy to send it to you as well. Okay, that's another great point. Andrew has a great sense of humor, Dan. I hope you don't mind it. He said, since Vega is not actually a Greek letter, how can you cover Vega traits in your book? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know that is a good point. Appreciate <laughs> <laughs> Andrew. Good point. You know, in fact, you know, I teach, as you know, uh, at the OIC, and we do th I do that all the time. Talk about the option Greeks, and we know that the Vega is not a Greek, but we throw it in there anyway. So um, that's just a. Uh, just part of the option Greeks, if you will. So, uh, very, you're right. But you know what? Vega is really important. In fact, Dan, this year with Vega was probably the most important Greek, although the next month or the next couple months we might say that uh, something else might be the most important Greek. And I just gave some volatility seminars for the OIC, and I always get which one is the most important Greek. And uh, my answer is it depends. I don't know. What, what's your take on that? Yeah, <clears throat> you know, that's absolutely the best answer. I mean, you know, a lot of times Delta can be. Um, right, exactly. You know, but I'll tell you, I mean, you know, kind of the classic example, I mean, you've probably talked about this in, in your seminars. I mean, the classic example is buying, for example, a, a, a call before a, a big event is expected. You know, for stocks it could be earnings, you know. Um, a lot of people buy calls, and the stock goes higher up upon earnings, and their call goes down. <laughs> you know, and in that case, it ends up that Vega was much more important than Delta. You know, and if you're buying some of these short-term options, Theta could be way more important than Delta. So yeah, it it depends on the strategy. It depends on what's going on in the market. Um, depends on depends on a lot. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. I always think that what differentiates a good trader, an average trader, and a poor trader is the poor trader has no idea how much money they're going to lose when the strategy isn't working, and the good trader knows right when they put the trade on what would cause the trade to turn bad and sort of reacts faster. Now, what do you think, Dan? Dan? You know what? That I I spend probably the. Uh, first session or two with every single student I, I have, whether they're new or experienced, hitting home on that point exactly. That's, you know, it's, it's not about, you know, being able to predict the future, like I said before. It's about managing your risk. And if you don't know what your risk is, you can't manage it. That's a good point. That's a good point. Guys, type in any other questions regarding anything with options, since Dan has written a book on Greek. So if you want to go to Greeks, that's fine. You want to talk more about calendar spreads, that's great. Um, Dan has a business, markettaker.com, and you can get them there, uh, Dan at Market Taker, or you know, obviously it's Market Taker, www.markettaker.com. Uh, you can check out his services. You could also mention that you were here at the ISC, uh, and um, he'll um, you know, do, uh, I guess they'll spend a little bit of time with you to see if you would uh, meet each other's sort of needs, you know, as far as what you're looking for and what he's looking for in a student. So please uh, contact Dan if you're interested and type in any other questions. Give everybody another moment or two. Uh, and Dan, you working on another book? Where's your focus these days? You know, I, I talked a little bit with uh, my publisher about that, but uh, i got to tell you, right now I'm so busy with... Uh, Market taker mentoring that I don't know when I'm going to be able to do it. Understood, understood. I mean, I know that it's challenging because you got to stay abreast of the markets. And when could you really write? But maybe on Saturday and Sunday, right? I mean, you'd be too much. It's hard to write during the week when the markets are open. Oh yeah, yeah, it sure is. And you know, um, you know, I mean, in addition to working with students, which is often during market hours, but I'll work with students at night for, you know, because there's a lot of students who have full-time jobs and it's just much more convenient for them. But, uh, you know, I mean, I have a subscription webinar series once a week, uh, you know, that takes up, takes up some time and, uh, you know, I, I, I do a lot of talking to traders. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a tight schedule. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, 
please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.